Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how you can leverage GitHub Actions for fame and fortune within your own goal projects. More specifically, we're going to be taking a look at how you can build your own GitHub Actions by starting off with a simple Hello World example and then ramping up to more useful actions such as code linting, test coverage reporting, as well as deploying Docker images of your Go apps. So what are GitHub Actions to start with? Well, GitHub Actions have recently become generally available to everyone with a repository on GitHub. They are an incredibly versatile tool that allow us to trigger code off the back of any changes pushed to our project's branches. Now this is awesome as it allows us as Go developers to programmatically trigger anything we need off the back of a commit to our main branch. Now, for example, whenever I make a change to say the main branch of a repository for this website, GitHub Actions automatically run through a series of jobs that build, deploy, and then test the website to make sure that there are no broken links in the website. So with that out of the way, let's dive into Visual Studio Code and start creating some really simple GitHub Actions for a really simple Go project. Now, as you can see here, I've got a main.go file that does nothing but print out hello world. And I've committed that up to a repository on GitHub called tutorial edge slash go GitHub Actions, which I'll make public for you after this video. Now, within Visual Studio Code, we want to do the following to create a simple Hello World action. Now, I'm going to create a new file, and this is going to live under the .github um, directory and under the .workflows um, directory under that, and I'm going to call that hello.yaml. So within this action, hello.yaml file, I'm going to start off by defining the name, which is going to be Hello World. And then I'm going to say on push to the master branch, I want to trigger a series of jobs. Now we're going to start off by defining a jobs block, which is going to contain the definition for all of the jobs we want to run within this action. Now the first job I'm going to call is the hello job, which is going to run on top of an Ubuntu 18.04 image. And then we're going to define the series of steps that we want this job to run through. Now the first step is going to be hello world, and it's going to run a simple echo hello world command like so. Now with this defined, we can then save it and get add get commit added hello action and then get push to the master branch like so perfect now with this added we can then open up the github repository and then we can browse to the actions tab and then within here we should see that the hello world action has successfully been added then we can actually see the output of the execution by clicking on the job here and then we can expand the hello world step that we've defined. And as you can see, it's ran the echo hello world command, which is echoed out as you'd expect, hello world. Awesome, so you've just successfully defined your first GitHub action within your Go project. Now that we've got that out of the way and we've got a basic handle on building these actions, let's take it a step further and start defining some actions that will be genuinely useful to us as maintainers of Go projects. Now let's start off by creating a new task or a new action within our workflows directory that will automatically lint our Go code for us. Now I'm going to start off by creating a new file and I'm going to call this lint.yaml like so. So just like before we're going to create a new name for this action and it's going to be lint go code. Next we're going to say again we want this to, let me just change the indent to 2. So every time a push is made to the branches, and we're gonna use the master branch, master, not mater. We're gonna define a new jobs block, and we're gonna call the first job lint. Now this is again gonna run on the same Ubuntu image that we had previously, so Ubuntu 18.04, and we're gonna define the steps block. Now the first step we're gonna say is it uses the actions uh, checkout and it's going to be the v2 version. Now what this will effectively do is it will check out our project source code into the container that this is running within. Next we can call another action using the uses um, block and this is going to be actions slash setup go and again it's going to be the v2 version. Now within this we're going to define a couple of parameters so we want to say with and we're not fussed about the stable versions, we're going to say stable false. And then we're going to say the Go version that we want to use is going to be 1.14.1. So now that we've got the code set up, 
and checked out and we've got Go set up at version 1.14.1. We then want to try and lint our code. So the next step we're gonna do is lint. Now this is gonna run a series of commands. So I'm gonna use the pipe op operator and then I'm gonna indent the next two commands in a space. And I'm gonna copy and paste these in because they are quite horrible curl commands. But I'm gonna leave the link in the description below to where you can find this exact command. But all it does basically is downloads the Golang CLI lint tool and then runs that Golang CLI lint tool using this command here. Perfect. Now with this added, we can then git add, git commit, added lint task, and git push once again to our main branch. And then when we navigate back into our project directory, click on the actions tab, we should see that the new GitHub action has been successfully added. And you can see it's in the process of running now. So we can actually watch the execution of this by clicking on the lint task. And as you can see, it's running through those steps that we've defined. So it's checked out the source code into the current container. It's now in the process of setting up Go version 1.14.1. And finally, it's running the lint step. So it has downloaded the, the Go lint tool and it's successfully run that against our simple main.go file. Now, as you can see, everything was linted correctly and our code all looks good. So this action has indeed passed. So what happens if we need to run across multiple platforms and multiple versions? Well, that's certainly possible using a matrix build. Now, Let's take this another step forward and create a test.yaml file, which is going to do the job of testing our application across different versions of Go and different platforms. So I'm going to do the following. So test.yaml. And at the top of this, I'm going to do name is equal to test. And on, once again, I'm going to indent using two spaces. Push to branches master spelled it correctly there and I'm going to define the jobs block so within this block I'm going to do test and we're going to mix it up a little bit here and use the strategy next so strategy and we're going to say we're using the matrix strategy now I'm going to say go version and I'm going to give it an array of 1.12.x 1.13.x and 1.14.x so all of just about all of the latest go versions and then i'm going to say the platform is going to be an array of ubuntu latest mac os mac os latest and windows latest like so next i'm going to say that this is going to run on the matrix.platform and I'm going to define the steps that it's going to run through. So steps. So the first step is going to be name install go. And this is going to set up go. So it uses the same action that we used in the previous task. So actions set up go at v2. And then we're going to say with the go version and we're gonna say matrix.go-version. This will automatically loop through all of these different versions and set up Go using this particular version. Now, just below this, we're gonna to want to do the following. So we're gonna to want to check out the code once again. So it uses actions slash checkout and v2 once again. And then we're gonna to want to define our test step. So test, and this is gonna run go test dot slash dot dot dot. Perfect. So currently our project didn't have any tests. So I've just added a nice and simple test just to pass something and show that it's actually running. Now with this in place, let's get add, get commit, added test matrix and get push origin and master branch. Perfect, now that's pushed, let's navigate back into our Go GitHub Actions repository. 
click on the actions tab and you should see that the test workflow is now available and it's just kicked off. Now, as you can see here on the left hand side, we have nine different versions and this is the matrix of all the tests um, that we want to run. So as you can see, this is running 1.12 on Ubuntu latest, 1.12 on Mac OS, 1.12 on Windows, and then it's doing the same for 1.13 and 1.14. Now we can click on these tasks and see the test output. And as you can see, there was nothing really to fail. So all of the tasks, all, all of the tests are passing as expected. Cool. Cool, so we've covered two simple Go actions so far. Now we're gonna cover one more in this tutorial, and that's gonna be the case or the action that will publish a Docker image up to Docker Hub for us. Now, as it stands, this project doesn't have a Docker file associated with it, so let's change that now. Add a Docker file that's gonna be from the base image golang 1.14.0 alpine. We're gonna create a directory within this Docker image, and we're gonna add all of the contents of our application or our Go project to this app directory. We're going to specify it's the work directory slash app. We're then going to run go clean mod cache. We're going to build our application out to a main executable file. And then we're going to trigger this main file using app main. So now that we've got this Docker file defined, let's add a new action that will publish this Docker file as an image to Docker Hub for us. Now I'm going to call this publish.yaml, publish, publish.yaml. And at the top, I'm going to say this is going to build and publish our Docker image. And then I'm going to say on, change the indent to two, push to branches and master, just like all of the other ones so far. Then we're going to define the jobs that's going to run through. So I'm going to call this job build and publish. And then I'm going to say this runs on Ubuntu latest. So I'm not really fussed about what version it runs on. And then I'm going to say the steps are as follows. So the first step is going to be uses um, the actions slash checkout v2 action, which will pull down our code once again. And then the next step we're going to do is the build docker image action or step, which is going to run the following command. So it's going to run docker build in the current directory. And the tag is going to be my image name appended with the date. So date, and we're going to format that using plus s like so. Cool, so that will build our Docker image. The next thing we want to do is to publish this Docker image. So define one more step called publish to registry. And this is gonna use one of the marketplace GitHub actions. And this is gonna be elgor slash publish Docker GitHub action. And we're gonna use master. Now, this is gonna take in a couple of secrets. So namely, it's gonna take in the Docker Hub username and password. And it's also gonna take in the name of the image that we wish to publish up. So I'm gonna define this within the width block. And I'm gonna say the name of our image is gonna be Forbesy Go GitHub Actions. And then the username. Now we're gonna use interpolation and not hard code this in. So I'm gonna interpolate from secrets.docker username. And then I'm going to do the same for the password. So this is going to equal dollar sign, open curly braces, secrets dot docker password. Perfect. Now with this in place, I'm going to get add, get commit. And get push origin master. Helps if I type my password correctly. And then I'm gonna open up the GitHub repository. Give it a quick refresh. And as you can see here, I added Docker push. And this is gonna try and run through these steps that we've defined within this GitHub action. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned is where we inputted the Docker username and Docker password. 
So you can do that on a per repository basis within the settings tab. Navigate to secrets. And as you can see here, I've added the Docker password and Docker username secrets. And if you want to add anything else that you want to expose, you can do new secret up here and test secret. Uh, test secret, can't type today, testing. Now at this point, if I wanted to use test secret within any of my GitHub actions, I could do just the same um, that we did with the, the secrets.docker username and docker password and just pass in test secret. So it's that easy. Um, so you don't really have to worry about secret handling as much. Now, one thing I would say is just be careful if you're passing this to unknown tasks um, as it could potentially echo out the usernames or the, the credentials that you're using and you want to be quite certain that the actions that you're using aren't malicious actors. Cool, so let's open up the actions tab once again. And we want to open up Build and Publish. And as you can see here, Build and Publish has successfully built our Docker image, ran through all the steps and just tried to trigger app main. And then it's published this to the repository using our username and password secrets. Perfect. And just to sanity check that everything has indeed worked, we can see that on Docker Hub, my new Go GitHub Actions uh, container image has been successfully published. Cool. So in this tutorial, we have successfully managed to create a number of very useful GitHub actions for our Go GitHub repositories. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but it hopefully highlights just how powerful GitHub actions can be when added to your own projects. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful, please leave a like and let me know in the comment section down below as it helps that YouTube algorithm. And if you're interested, the full text version of this tutorial can be found on my website. Again, I'll be leaving a link to that in the description below. And thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.